Okay, so let's now look at unit one, day three. So this is where we're really going to get into the geometry. I mean, yesterday we threw around a few terms like angles and lines and segments. But those are just to identify properties. Today's where is where we're really going to get going on geometry. But we'll keep it simple. So the first three things that we're going to look at are how to identify points, lines, and planes. And kind of contra contrary to what you think, these three terms, even though it's like, well, I can define them, I know what they are, they're still all three called undefined terms. Why? Honestly, I have no clue. I would have to look it up. But they're all three called undefined terms. Interesting. So let's just go through them in order. First, we have a point. If you look at a map and find a point on the map, what does that point tell you? The location of the town. Maybe it's some interesting stop or something. It shows a location. Now on a map, we may have an idea of how big or small the town is. But for a point itself, a point has no size whatsoever. No size. And as far as geometry goes, we name the point using a capital letter. So, for example, we have this point here. I'm going to call it A. So I put an A beside the point. If I'm writing it out, I can just say A, or I can say point A. That's how you name points. Now let's take it one step further and look at a line. A line is straight. It's not curved like this, like a snake. It's not jagged like Harry Potter's lightning bolt. It's just straight. And it extends forever in two directions. But it has no thickness. You know, that T was about to be thick. Now we've got to name this line. So to name a line properly, we have to use any two points on the line itself, or we could also use a lowercase cursive letter.
So what does that look like, you ask? Well, let's say these two points here are B and C. And this line, we're going to use the cursive letter L. Now, there's multiple ways you can write the name of this line. You can say line BC, or you can say line CB. Both are okay. But let's say that's too much writing. You don't want to have to write the word line. Well, then you can say BC and then draw a line, but you have to put the arrows on top. If you don't put the arrows, you're telling me it's a segment. We haven't talked about segments yet, but we will by the end of the day. You've got to put the arrows if you're talking about a line. Or we have CB. Line CB. There's four ways just right there. And then our fifth way, if we didn't want to do any of that, that's still too much work. We can just say L with the cursive L. Or if you wanted to, I guess I should I guess I should rephrase that. You could say L or you could say Line L. So there are six ways to name that single line. If we added more points, there'd be even more ways. You just have to have two points on the line or a lowercase cursive letter. Now let's move on to planes. This isn't the plane you fly in. It's spelled like it, but it's not. A plane is a flat surface, and it, and it extends forever in all directions. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. So whether you're in a classroom or you're just in a room, if you look at a wall, a plane would be like that wall, but imagine it goes on forever. So it busts through the outside walls of your house. It busts through the roof. It goes all the way down through the center of the earth and out the other side. It just goes forever in all directions. It's named by three points, not in a line. That's important. Three points. Why is this doing this to me? Sorry, guys. My hand keeps hitting the these pins down here. So I'm just going to change them to all small. And then if I hit any of them, I'll just keep writing and change it later. So if you start seeing a bunch of pretty colors, know that my hand probably accidentally hit a different pen. Okay, it's named by three points. Like it just did there. <laughs> Not... in a line. Or you can use a capital cursive letter.
Okay, so I'm going to call these points D, E, F. And then the capital cursive letter I'm going to use is a T. Looks like a J, but it's a capital cursive T. Now let's talk about some ways that we can name this. We could use just our cursive letter. So plain T. We could say plain and then pick these three points, so plain D, E, F. We could say plain F, D, E. Just any combination of those three points we can use. Now, one thing you can't do is let's say we had a third point right here that was G. You cannot say anything like plain D, G, E, E, G, D, or anything like that because these are all on the same line. Those will be counted wrong. Don't do it. Okay. Now let's talk about something called collinear and coplanar. First, we're going to look at collinear. So Let's take a step back for a second. If you're playing a sport and that team has co-captains, what's that mean? That more than one person is a captain. So coming back to geometry, if something is collinear, That means they're on the same line. So we say that points on the same line are collinear. Points not on the same line, we're gonna make it real easy, non-collinear. Okay, so example one. We have to use this picture up here and then ask us, are points K, L, and M collinear? So are K, L, and M on the same line? Yeah, I'd say so. I'm going to say yes. Okay. What about K and N? Are they collinear? And notice they give you a hint. Can you draw a line between K and N? Yep, I just did it. So yes, they're collinear. I skipped 
K, L, and N. There you go, let's go back and grab them. So now they're asking about K, L, and N. So we have to look at all three of those points as one. Are K, L, and N collinear? Are they all three on the same line? No. Okay, so let's see. We looked at just K and N. Next, we ask us about N and L. Or N and L collinear. Think back to the hint they gave us on talking about K and N. Can we draw a line between N and L? Well, if I could draw a perfect line, I'd say yes. Let's see here. Let's see if I can use this ruler and do it. Even then, I bet I still can do it. Ha, huh, got it. I got it. So yeah, you can draw a line between them. And the reason we ask about K and N and then N and L is because there's just a fact of the matter, any two points will always be collinear. So are any two points collinear? Yes. If you just have two points, draw a line between them and they're collinear. Okay, so now the last one on this example asks us about, I'm gonna draw an arrow to extend these and show that it sits on. Good enough. Name three points that are non-collinear. What does non-collinear mean? Not on the same line. So basically, you can say N because it's not on that line at all, and then pick the any of the other three. I'm gonna say N, K, and L. You can use L and M if you want to. Just as long as N is in there, doesn't matter. You can say N, K, and L, N, K, and M, N, L, and M. As long as you've got N, you're Gucci. Oh, sorry, I mean good. Okay, so now we're going to look at coplanar. Are point, or let me back up. Points on the same plane are, they're on the same plane, so we're going to say they are coplanar. Points not on the same plane are non coplanar. Okay. So, example two. First, they ask us are the points R, S, and T coplanar? And you mark a, you know where a plane's at based on the shape. 
So are those points coplanar? Excuse me. I'm talking about R, S, and T. Yep, they're all within the shape. So we can give a big old yes to that. Now they ask about R, S, T, and A. So now we're including A. Is A in the same shape? No. So we'll say it's not coplanar. So no. Okay, so we're done with the front of the notes. Now let's flip over to the back. And we've got some more definitions. Lovely. Okay, so first one we're going to look at is a segment. A segment is a part of a line consisting of two end points and all the points between them. Don't zoom out on me. I'm not done with you. All points between them. So now let's come over here. We're going to skip this name column for a second because I want us to draw a diagram. And we're going to come over here and draw a segment. And it's not going to be pretty because I can't draw pretty. But just go with it here. So we're going to call this... I'll just go back, start over, A and B. Okay, so to name it, you can say segment A, B. That works. I mean, that, that's certainly a, come back. I'm not done with you yet. You can certainly say segment A, B. All right, that right here. Segment A, B. You can also use symbols, and the way you'll probably see it is in the form of a symbol. So it's A, B. You put a line over it, but you don't put the arrows. That's why I said it's important to know which one you're talking about. A segment does not have arrows because it stops. A line has arrows because it goes on forever. So you could say AB or you could also say BA. Okay, so that's a segment. Then we have a ray. A ray is a part of a line that starts at an end point. So it's got a starting point, but then it extends forever in one direction. So I'm gonna draw two figures over here. I call this C, call that one D, but then I'm also going to draw another one going this way. Call that one D and that one C. And you may be wondering why is he using the same points? 
both of those, even though they're going in opposite directions, we still say that it is ray. We can write it out and say ray CD, or you can do symbols CD, and then draw a line with only one arrow. Now, when you name it, you have to put the end point first. Where does it start? Think of it like a race. Start your engines. Where do I start my engines at? On both of these, we start at C. And then we just have to pick a point after wherever we start. So in each case, we went through D. So you first one is where you start, and then the second letter is whatever you go through. So we start at C, and then we go through D. Now, an end point is a point at both ends of a segment. or at the starting point of a ray. And again, since it's a point, we just name them with capital letters. So let's draw a diagram with some points on it and then name the points. So our points here, it's, let's see, it says at both ends of a segment. Okay, so we know G and H are points. We can say G and H are the starting point of a ray. E is our starting point of the ray. F, we keep going through, so we can't say F, but E is our starting point. Okay, and last but not least, def well, yeah, almost. In this chart, the last definition is opposite rays. They are two rays that have a common end point, so they start in the same place and they form a line. So if they start in the same place, but form a line, let's say this is point X, that means they've got to go in opposite directions. That's why they're called opposite rays. So I'm gonna have a point over here called Y, a point over here called Z. So our opposite rays would be X, Y, and X, Z. I don't like how my X's are coming out. X, Y, and X, Z. Those are our opposite rays. Notice the X came first on both because X is where they start. They both started X and then go in opposite directions. Okay, so now we have a couple of postulates. So there's a two lines intersect. 
They intersect in exactly one what? Well, I don't know. Let's see. I've got two lines up here. There's one line. There's two lines. What's this called where they intersect? It's a point. So two lines intersect. They intersect at exactly one point. If two planes intersect, then they have to intersect in exactly one what? Well, let's try to draw this here. Let's try to draw what's going on. So there is one plane. If I have another Maybe he's going this way. Well, it looks like they cross right here, but remember, planes go on forever. So what is this shape called that I just put in green? I'm gonna draw arrows because they go on forever. That's a line. So two planes intersect in exactly one line. Okay, now for the last big example. They want us to use this picture to name all of the following. Okay, so name five points. It can be any five points on this picture. I bet most of y'all probably said A, B, C, D, E. If you put X, in this case, okay, because they didn't specify if they had to be anything the same, just five points. Name one line. Well, there's two lines on the screen. I could say... Oh, if this comes back to me, I can say something. There's, again, tons of different lines you could use. I'm going to use line EB. I'm going to put this line over it like that. Name three non-collinear points. So they can't be on the same line. Again, there's multiple ones. As long as they're not on the same line, you can use them. So you can't say EDB. Can't say that. They can't be on all on that line. As long as they're different, think of it like you're wanting to make a triangle. Try to make a triangle with the points. So, I don't know. E-A-B, I guess. E-A-M-B. Now it does ask for three collinear points. So we do want them to be on the same line. Three points on the same line. This one only has one answer. The only one that's got three collinear points is E, D, B.
And the next one, name four coplanar points. Coplanar means what? On the same plane. So let's name four points on the same plane. We could say C, A, E, and B. I mean, as long as they're within that blue plane, we're good. Now, don't say R. R is not a point. This is a plane. It's in cursive. Don't say R. Next one says name four non coplanar. Come back to me. So I'm going to start with X just so I know I'll get it right because X is the only point not on that plane. So I'm going to say X and then pick any of my other three points. How about we all go to ACE, A-C-E. Okay, now it says name a point on segment E-B. So we start at E and we go to B. What's a point on that segment, a point in between them. D, that's it. Next one says, give another name for plane R. Remember, if you tell me EDB, it's wrong. They can't be on the same line. So I'm going to say plane. I just go with ACE again. Plane ACE. They're not all on the same line, so we're okay. Now I ask for a ray opposite of DB. So we're the opposite. So DB is right there. We want to go the opposite direction. So we've got to start at D. We have to start at D. That's non-negotiable. Got to start at D. But then we want to go in the opposite direction. We do that, what point will we go through? We'll go through, start at D, we'll go through E. So, Ray D, E. And last but not least for the notes. Are C and A collinear? Just point C and point A, are they collinear? If you say no, think about what we said on the front of the notes. Can you draw a point in between the two? I mean, draw a point, draw a line in between the two. Oh, looks like I just did. So are those two points by themselves collinear? Yes. Okay, so there's your notes for unit one, day three. Stay tuned for the guided practice.